Welcome back to another video on the Bonneville. Today we're going to be doing the first performance upgrades to the bike, finishing off with a remap and a test ride. I hope you enjoy it. So thankfully I've had the help from Ultimate Twin Performance and I received these two packages in the post the other day. We've got the uh, air injection removal kit, the SAI removal kit. And then on here, we've got the O2 removal kit there as well. Uh, I won't be doing these just yet. You'll probably see them in a moment, but today all I'm gonna do is actually, um, because we uh, found, well, he sourced a um, k and filter, which are quite expensive, um, quite hard to source sometimes because they're out of stock quite a lot. This one was from eBay, nice and cheap. Uh, you can probably see it is uh, a little bit used, very used in fact. So what I need to do, just picked up from Halfords a k and performance uh, cleaning kit. So what you do is you clean it with that, spray it on, leave it for 10 minutes, rinse it out, and then uh, once it's dried, use the oil. Uh, should be like new, hopefully, and it'll look nice and red. <laughs> And here we have a part of that eBay listing. So it was a real nice cheap bargain to find that, uh, a new air intake cover. The old one had a long snorkel that came down here. You may have seen it in other videos or in my previous video when I was installing other bits. That goes over and uh, allows a lot more air to go in. More intake noise, which is quite nice. And also there's a baffle to remove from inside the battery, inside the air box. Not that I'm unhappy with the bike at the moment. It is fantastic, but just that little bit more power because I'm running the Tor exhaust already. Um, it's running a bit lean at the moment. So uh, these things plus that, uh, plus the map will mean it will run perfectly, sound lovely. Bit more power and uh, apparently a lot less snatchiness in that low down sort of bits and pieces on the throttle there. Because I do find if there's two of you on the bike or you're just sort of going around town, um, it is very jerky. So I'm looking forward to smoothing everything else out and moving on to some things that actually change the way the bike rides, which would be very exciting. So let's get going. And here, I forgot to mention, are some instructions supplied by Ultimate Twin Performance and originally from Triumph Twin Power. They're in association together. The map will actually come from Triumph Twin Power, but uh, Ultimate Twin Performance will help me uh, install it. So looking forward to that. So first things first, what I did was give the k and filter a good clean with the filter cleaning kit that I did. All you need to do is spray it on, leave it, and then give it a bit of a rinse out. So this kit includes two bolts to put in the head for blanking, washers for them, a plastic bung, two rubber end caps if you've got a card model, a piece of heat shrink, and some copper grease. The process isn't all too hard. First of all, taking off the seat, and what I do is instead of removing the tank altogether, is I just place it over to the side, there's a small breather sort of tube that needs to come off and then you can just rest it over there with a couple of bungees as well. The air injection pipes are then removed, easy with some pliers. All you need to do is just release all the clips and it slides right off. This bit was difficult. What you need is a ring spanner, which I didn't have. So what I did was just put a socket over it and use mold grips as well to try and crank it off. Easy peasy and then the bolt goes in with a bit of copper grease. I like this kit because it doesn't leave anything on the bike. You remove all the modules themselves. They get mapped out anyway, and uh, it's a lot neater not having these bits under the bike. You could just leave it if you wanted it to be original, but I just like the idea of these redundant pieces just being removed completely. And now it's time to do the other side. The second piece of the air injection kit comes off and that leaves the connector actually exposed there. So I've put a piece of heat shrink over and using the blowtorch to shrink that over and then a pair of pliers to crimp the end so that no water can get in. That's really nice and neat then. And then you just hit the engine with a hammer. No, only joking, that was me getting the socket on and then attaching the mole grips once again, which is a really bad setup. And I'd recommend 100% getting a stepped ring spanner before you do it. I got mine off in the end and it didn't go all too badly. Plug back in, nice and easy, and moving on to the next step. That is inserting the plastic bung. I first put some RTV sealant on there. It's quite hard to put on, so I needed both hands and used a rag to really set it in there and then wiped off the excess. Next up, what we're gonna do is get the airbox out to remove the baffle. I have to warn you, it took me a few hours <laughs> because you do have to take a lot of stuff off the bike. This is definitely not gonna be a tutorial. You can see me doing it here, but obviously I'm going a thousand miles an hour I watched the Man Cave Moto video when he upgraded his T100. I kept that in mind, didn't actually have to watch it while I was doing it. 
you just need to sort of get an idea for what you have to do and it's pretty self-explanatory once you get there my tips would be to just make sure you remember the steps you could film yourself if you wanted to that's that way you can then sort of go backwards and see which step went where there were a couple of times I had hiccups uh, putting the back wheel back in but it's all those things that you you sort of learn the first time you do it and uh, you know if I had to do it again now I'd do things differently but definitely taking the information from people m making videos online more tutorial sort of style videos better than mine and um, then you'll be fine so at this point I was definitely getting there you have to remove the rear mud guard as well which I didn't realize just a final little bit of a wriggle to get it out of the frame and then it's out what a good moment next up you have to remove the side cover make note which side I'm doing it on unfortunately I did the wrong side took it apart and realized I had to reseal it so that did extend the time a little bit once you're there though you are at the baffle and that just slides out easy peasy and uh, you can see the difference that's a tiny little hole in there so you don't want to do all this work just to have a bad seal so put the rubber little grommet back in and then I've used RTV sealant to seal it back up again and then you just need to put the plate back on crank the uh, little uh, screws down all the way around making sure you sort of do them offset if you can like a wheel and then just wipe away the excess and there you'll probably have a better seal than you ever did and it's actually black rather than brown here is the old filter intake snorkel does limit water ingress but apparently that is not a problem with this big new one look at the amount of difference in the uh, opening there for the air to go in no snorkel and uh, it slips in really nice and easily unfortunately one of my bolts was cross-threaded so that did add time I had to re-tap those but that was the easiest install and it was time to put it all back in thankfully you're just taking it all apart so it is just you know working your way back like Lego or Meccano it's one of those jobs that feels like it's taking an age while you're doing it but thankfully once it's, it's done you feel like you've done a good job and you have done everything properly and it's a great step for the power okay so i am absolutely roasting in here the door won't open and i think i've spent just about three hours obviously he probably could have done it a bit quicker and if he did it another time it would have been a bit quicker in total as well all of that just to remove the baffle there <laughs> apparently there are a few other ways you can get the plate out without taking the back wheel out without taking the back box off um or you apparently people have like heat it up break and break it out um i would say it's almost worth trying those things but uh i didn't want to do it myself i just wanted to get everything out do it properly as you saw went through everything there it is a bit of a job <laughs> it does seem like a lot of work for that but without uh the removal of that the whole map and the, all of the other bits and the components the air filter um won't come into play because you can see now instead of just coming through this tiny little gap there as you can see now where this plastic piece is that's how big the gap is for the air to come through the can and filter and for everything else to work so uh yeah that took a bit of time uh it's a bit of a job but um we're now ready for the next step which is cool and the next step is removing the o2 sensors which will be mapped out as well for the map and is pretty essential easy peasy just taking the two connectors out from inside the frame it can be a little bit fiddly because they're stuck in there what you have to do is remove the oil cooler just to get the cables out that's not too hard obviously you can't see it because I'm in the way next up get a spanner removing the O2 sensor itself and this is probably one of the easiest bits to do you know at this point you can keep this if you want to put it back to stock in the future but I doubt you'll need to do that next up it's time to put the blanking plug in I've used a ratcheting spanner with a allen key in there but you could just use a standard allen key if you need to this is one of the easiest jobs you can do on this whole mission and it only took a few moments it's just trying to get the uh, cables out from behind the oil cooler which is the main bit but once these are cranked down it's nice and easy you just need to remove the connectors here I put a bit of tape over the end but in the kit is uh, supplied with some heat shrink cracked out the um, blowtorch again and all you need to do is heat them down they get so hot you just crimp the ends with the uh, pliers as you can see here and uh, it's a real nice neat easy way of keeping the water out and also nice to know that you're doing everything properly next up I'm just going to tape these onto a couple of the cables underneath the tank there and then uh, use a couple of cable ties to make sure they're nice and secure putting the sharp bits out of the way and uh, again doing things as properly as I sort of can do once those steps are done it's time to put the bike back together leave the seat off 
charge the battery up and then we're ready to get remapping. This is definitely something you can do yourself with a cable and a PC, but Chris from UTP came down to help me. Now, all the performance mods that we do from this point onwards, they do not take away the character of the bike. The, great, they just yeah. make it better and better. <laughs> yeah. And you get an instant, wow, this is amazing. Yeah. It's like today, so like syncing the throttle bodies and um, doing your throttle position sensor, that makes such a difference. Even that one and people own. just skip it. I don't sit on it and go, you know, I need more power. It's like oh, a little bit more power is nice, but it's also that lower end, you know, joltiness and... That'll all go. That the tor what you know, running slightly, is it lean? I it's running lean, lean yeah, yeah. With the tors exhaust, you know, I definitely notice it's getting a bit hot sometimes, so yeah. I think it's just... Easy to fix that. Exactly. I could hear you fluttering a bit on the phone when I talked about taking the airbox out, but now you've done yeah. it, like, oh, yeah, that's it's, the thing. it's not that bad. Yeah, it's just, it's, yeah, it's just a... And by doing that, you don't snap anything or lose nah, anything, and if exactly. you did want to, I don't know, hand the baffle to someone nah. else, then you could, <laughs> you, you know what I mean? But, but it's also the non-destructive method. Yeah. So we're in, so start. So O2 sensors disabled, your yeah. secondary air injection disabled. That's what that stands for, I see. Yeah, secondary. <laughs> you were like, what? Bonneville T100, yeah. tune two. Which is one point, stage 1.5. Make sure the bike has a fully charged battery for this operation. Yeah. Charge it there. <laughs> yeah. So we can reset all the codes and what you'll do is just start the bike and the bike will get up, basically as the bike runs, you don't touch the throttle. Yeah. And what it'll do is it'll reset itself. It's like a calibration, isn't it? Reset adaption. Yeah. So, so I bought that on TTP. Yeah, and then this is this is your tune. This is my tune, I paid for that on there. And but if people want to put it onto their bike and they've got a PC, yeah. do you sell the cable? I sell the cable. Sell the cable. So that's, that's the Triumph Twin Power cable. Yeah. yeah. Which you sell. Well. The map comes from Triumph Twin Power itself, yeah. but I've got all the physical products. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the breathe, the filters, yeah. all that stuff. So you, your, your throttle position sensor value is great. Yeah. The map will be done as it's running once it's warmed up. So reset adaption, reset. First car complete, turn off your ignition, wait for the green light connection to extinguish. Obviously. So you can see how long the ECU is staying active because we've turned it off. Yeah, yeah. It's still green. It's still connected. As soon as that turns to red, yeah. ECU is not responding. We know because it's uh, That's good. disconnected. Replace fuse nine. Yeah. Done. Oh, put it back in. Now. Put it back in. Okay. And then we turn the ignition back on. Fiddly. Tiny, mate. Imagine doing it with my hands. <laughs> yeah. Basically, start the bike. Just press the button. Don't touch the throttle. And then once once it will run, we'll put put that back in again. Yeah. If they're within ten, you won't get any closer than that. Yeah. So. Whoa. That's pretty good. Yeah. Too so bad. it's it's perfect. It's perfect. Your TPS was perfect. If you needed to do the TPS, if you come around here, yeah. You've got a very small screw on the bottom. Just crack that screw off. Just yeah. loosen it off ever so slightly, so the TPS can move. And you need to move it ever so slightly. And then what you'll do is you'll move it and look at this here. I see. And that's that's the score you want. You want a 0 0.60. I've not I've seen a few videos of people mapping bikes and looking at this. And that's the only time I've ever seen them like completely lined up like that. Yeah. I guess it's only done like it's low mileage, it's isn't like it? Like 9000 or something like that. To be honest, someone might knock it while yeah. they're cleaning it. I didn't realize it was just a screw. As Crazy. the two as the two butterflies were, yeah. they'll go slightly different. Yeah, yeah. And they just it's it's the tiniest amount just brings them back in, but it makes yeah. the bike ride better fuel economy. If your yeah. fuel economy drops slightly, go straight straight to your to your 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 throttle's balance. Yeah, yeah. That'll clear it right up. So, as you see, here, it turns green 70 degrees, whichever comes sooner. Nice. Are you ready for this? So there we go then. That was a great little session with Chris. So nice of him to come and do that for me and he made it a hell of a lot easier as well. So here we are then, out on the bike. I'm gonna try and keep my voice down as much as possible because I don't think the mic's gonna take it. I am unbelievably happy with it. We were talking the whole time about power numbers and figures and how they do mean something, but it all comes down to when you ride it. Does it make you feel any better? Does it make it feel nicer to ride? And oh my goodness, yes. Just any gear, it's just ready to go.
So for me, I don't want to go crazy with these bikes, you know, it's just that getting that last bit of power that Triumph intended to have out of the factory when they couldn't because of emissions. For me, it's smoothing out the throttle around town when you've got a pillion on and also just giving it that little bit more power all the way around as well. And it sounds a hell of a lot better and I'm super happy with it. That's where it really kicks off. There. Wow. <laughs> it's very different. This goes like that. You pull it and it keeps going from the linear curve all the way up. The power is there through the rev range as well, which is brilliant. One thing that removing the SAI uh, air injection does is takes away the pops and bangs on the overrun. I didn't mind that at all, but it did get a bit much sometimes. It sounded like gunshots going off and uh, did scare some people sometimes. Now on the overrun you've just got a nice smooth engine sound, none of that, and that also makes the bike run a hell of a lot smoother as well. Obviously it's a very rainy day, so I'm sorry if the GoPro is getting a bit wet, but I definitely just want to leave you a first ride, first impressions out on the bike, and also just get out for 10 minutes just to see what it's like and actually ride a bike for the first time in a few weeks as I haven't been able to get out of the house. Definitely need to be a bit careful on the throttle. Get past this flood and then one gone. Oh wow. Go down to this corner. Get on third. Turn the up one. <laughs> Otherwise, we we'll keep going. Fourth gear, steep hill. Really nice. Really beautiful power. That's fifth gear. I didn't even realize. Trying to contain my excitement of how this is feeling and trying to keep my voice down for the microphone is quite a challenge, I have to let you know. But we are behind a van now, so I think it will be time to wrap this one up. It's going to be a long one. I hope you've enjoyed seeing each and every step of the process. Uh, hearing from Chris, seeing us install the map, and also coming out on a test ride. I wanted to make sure to do it all in one go, because I've seen a lot of videos of people doing this uh, upgrade. These upgrades to the bike, but not in one video. And I would definitely say that... There are better videos of a tutorial page step online, there was garage uh, and a few other bits and pieces. But I hope you get a gist of everything you have to do here. And I have to say, first impressions, first 10 minute ride in the wet. It's absolutely fantastic, I'm really happy about it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.